Greetings my fellow hiker, today I'm taking you on a hot spot out here in Sedona. We are taking a very easy hike up to Boynton Canyon Cave. Hi, I'm Breeze, the president of Vaucluse Backpack Ventilation Gear where we love to sweat less and explore more, especially out here in Sedona, Arizona. I'm taking you on a very accessible trail to a cave out here in Sedona. The trail is called the Boynton Canyon Trail. Let's dive in. I'm going to be showing you my all trail maps. The link is going to be right below. I'm also going to be providing my Strava recording of the trail. The link is going to be right below so you can easily access where I'm going on your own. Let's start with the trailhead. You're going to find a parking lot and the trailhead just outside the entrance to Enchantment Resort. There's also some parking on the side of the road. Uh, be cautious because you are going to need a parking pass out here because it is a national forest. We are headed north on the Boynton Canyon Trail towards Boynton Canyon. Uh, the official U.S. Forest Service Trail can be found at the link below. Again, if you want more information about where I'm taking you, you can find it there. The canyon, as is Sedona, is located in what is called the Coconino National Forest. You're going to, as I mentioned, you're going to need a parking pass and this area in itself inside the Coconino National Forest. This area is also called the Red Rock Secret Mountain Wilderness. It's a collection of red cliffs, buttes and canyons, all very beautiful, all spe spectacular, all picturesque. The link to the Red Rock Secret Mountain Wilderness is going to be also found below for additional information. Along the trail, you take a very short detour to the right to explore Boynton Canyon Vortex. So this is a little stop off along your way to the cave. Um, it's quick, it's short, great views. If you don't want to do the almost three hour hike that I'm going to be showing, if, and if you just want to get great views within probably 45 minutes, you can just do the Boynton Canyon Vortex. To continue back on to the cave, you just head on back down to the Boynton Canyon Trail and head north. You hike north for really some time and then you're going to be wanting to look for a path across the river. I missed it. It might be marked. I didn't see it so I had to turn back and then I went on. So once on this trail, which again seemed unmarked to me, you just continue hiking until you reach the rocks where the cave is. You finally reach the cave. Exciting. It's beautiful. However, there is one little thing about the cave. It's there are a lot, I mean a lot of tourists, I'm not joking. This is probably one of the most hiked trails in Sedona and I usually don't take uh, trails that are hiked a lot by tourists so I forget how many tourists there were. There were a lot. Um, there were a lot of great views as well of course but given to the fact that there were so many tourists especially with their dogs. I'm no, I'm not going to head back. The dogs and owners seem to be enjoying the echo effect of the cave. Uh, my ears, they started to hurt and it was quite loud even not in the cave. It was just, it was just echo, echo, echo of humans and dogs. So um, great views but I wouldn't recommend uh, doing it if uh, you don't like tourists. You can do the vortex and then just head back or just continue down Boynton Trail and you're going to avoid all the um, the tourists. The total length of the hike was 6.2 miles. The elevation gain was just 833 feet. Again, great views for not a lot of hiking up. The total moving time was 2 hours and 46 minutes. And today I've got a real treat for you. I'm going to be showing you our Vaucluse ventilation backpack frame which I used on this hike and I equipped it with right here. This was my backpack. I'm going to show some videos of myself hiking with the backpack and what I, you simply do is you can attach this very light, uh, very flexible and comfortable frame on your backpack if you want to increase the airflow of your backpack and that's what I did here and I'm going to be showing you actually the stats of how my back performed you could say on this hike because I equipped it. I'm going to be showing you the uh, the data. I equipped my backpack with a Govee thermometer which tracks both my back heat and my humidity and as you know sweating is extremely uncomfortable. 
for a lot of people and sometimes it can be very dangerous especially out here in Sedona when I was hiking it was quite cold and so the temperature was um, around 40 degrees but in the shade it was much colder and if you're in the sun it feels a whole lot hotter and warmer so the temperature on the outside can fluctuate and so let me show you um, how this frame performed on this hike and let's dive in and as you can see from the stats my back temperature actually stayed constant at 50 degrees Fahrenheit uh, the back humidity never stayed over 60 percent for very long as you can see it was dropping and you can also see from the pictures that I'm going to be showing as well in this video that my back stayed dry thanks to the ventilation frame I didn't end up with a sweaty back almost after three hours of hiking there was just and again in the photos you can see the sweat was just on the straps of my of where my backpack was and obviously I didn't have the frame there so if you um, want to increase the ventilation system of your backpack whether it's a day pack it's a large pack pack this fits backpacks anywhere from 15 to 55 liters we've gotten uh, customers to do this and uh, whether it's your male or female it'll attached to men's and women's backpacks if you just want to have that relief in your back with the airflow check us out vocluesegear.com and we have plenty of customer five-star reviews which you can check out and see what everyone's talking about with the vocluse ventilation backpack frame see you on the trails and the sweating less <laughs> 